So those are the three things that are most frequently quantified when it comes to surface finish. So let's get into how we specify it. Again, on the left here, you see your three, uh, your three main characteristics of surface finish. Um, and certainly height and density is the easiest one to deal with and the most frequently dealt with is you can quantify the height by RA and you can quantify the frequency um, by um, either the peak spacing or the developed surface ratio. Nano features might be quantifiable if you use one of the high-end interferometers. Uh, I can't say that for certain. I've never actually seen that done successfully, um, but it can be controlled with a process specification. And then the last thing in specifying a surface finish would be what shape do you want? Do you want that grit blasted look or do you want that peened type surface? And really that's not something that ever comes out of a profilometer. I mean, you as a human can look at it and understand which one it is, but I haven't seen a machine that will spit that out for you. And really the, the easiest way to control that is to make sure that you use the same abrasive each time. So now let's get into how to make sure that this surface finish is the same each time. Out of any abrasive blaster, it doesn't matter whether it is a micro blaster or a cabinet blaster, there's only three things. Once the abrasive leaves that nozzle, there's three variables. What is the abrasive? How much of it is there? And how fast is it going? So step one in making sure your process is controlled is to pick the right abrasive. So if you want a grit blasted surface, don't expect to get that with glass bead. You need to use something that has angles and jagged shapes like aluminum oxide. Uh, the abrasive size and hardness will also have a heavy influence on your RA. So typically what a customer would do is they would pick an abrasive supplier and then just stick with that abrasive. And now it's important that you have a quality abrasive because if your particle sizes vary within your lot of abrasive, then your RA that you're going to get out of that blasting process is also going to vary. Second thing you want to make sure you do is control that abrasive uh, velocity. Um, so imagine throwing those ax heads I was talking about um, gently at an aluminum plate versus throwing them very hard at the aluminum plate. You can imagine that it's going to make different size dents. So particle velocity has a heavy influence on surface roughness. Um, unfortunately, velocity is something that's pretty difficult to measure and requires specialized equipment. But uh, fortunately, blast pressure, the pressure at which the air molecules behind the nozzle are trying to force those particles through the nozzle is something that's very easy to control. So blast pressure is absolutely your most important variable in controlling this. You need to make sure you've got a constant, constant blast pressure. Uh, stream density also plays a role in how fast, as you can imagine, a dense stream is going to fight itself. As opposed to a lean stream, those air molecules that are running into the back of the particles are able to each act on the particles more effectively because they're not interrupted by previous particles. Um, nozzle size, a bigger nozzle for the same everything else will usually give you, you know, will always give you a higher velocity. That's not surprising. I think one thing that is a little surprising is that the farther away you get from the nozzle, the faster that abrasive is going. So if you're really trying to control your abrasive velocity, you need to make sure your nozzle is the same distance from your part all the time. Uh, the reason it continues to accelerate after it's left the nozzle is that those air molecules are going so much faster than the abrasive that even three inches outside the nozzle, they continue to impart um, energy into the back of those abrasive particles. And the last thing you need to control is abrasive quantity. Um, as you saw in the previous slide, if you have more quantity or less quantity, you're going to affect your velocity. So you need to make sure you have a constant quantity. Um, it also turns out that more abrasive as it exits the nozzle wants to fan out more. It makes an uglier spray pattern. So you want a nice lean stream because it's controllable. It does not have a great effect on RA because it continually reshapes the, the part, but it does have a very large effect on those nano features. So in the craggly graph at the bottom on the left, it's very little um, impacts, maybe, maybe one extra impact per area. And on the right, you get a lot of nano features. And what that looks like to the eye is it, it looks darker. So if I took a part and I blasted it for one unit of time uh, and I did two, three, four, five, say to 10, I could give those 10 samples to a random person um, and they'd be able to put them in order as to which one was blasted the most. And I can't measure a difference. RA is the same, the surface looks the same. So maybe one of those interferometers can quantify nano features, um, but it's really a process control spec. So what affects quantity? Well, first you need to make sure that your blaster is putting out a consistent blast stream. And this is the principal difference uh, between a cabinet blaster, which is a siphon feed, versus 
a, um, a pressure pot type microblaster is. The microblaster is, is precision, precision metering abrasive into that airstream versus a uh, suction system that there's a tube down in a, a bin that might pick up some abrasive, it might not. Uh, the second one for making sure that you have the right quantity is consistent coverage, consistent motion. Um, some applications don't need it, but if yours does, like dental implants, uh, universally I think are done CNC, um, you need to make sure you move your nozzle at a consistent rate, consistent distance if you want to get a consistent product. So, the three main characteristics again are on the left. If you want to control shape, you got to make sure you have a consistent type and abrasive, a type and size of abrasive. And the shape again is, is it a grit blasted surface or is it a bead blasted surface? Uh, the height and density. This is the one you could measure with a profilometer or a microscope. Um, the height is also affected by abrasive type. Uh, just as we saw, you know, a heavier particle is going to push its way into a ductile material for, uh, farther. Uh, and you also need to make sure your velocity is constant because if you throw that, that axe head, as I was uh, making the analogy before, harder, it's going to go deeper. So you need to make sure you've got a constant velocity in your stream. And then lastly, if you want to control your nano features, that's mostly controlled with consistent quantity. Um, but consistent quantity also has a minor role in velocity. So really, if you want a consistent blast stream, these are the, these are the three things you need to control. So here we are at the end. Um, we went over the main characteristics of microblasted surfaces. That's what's the shape, how tall is it, how dense is it, and how many of those nano features do you need? Um, how, what are real world actual ways to quantify these surfaces? Um, and then how do you specify it? So on a print, you'll typically see, I want an RA of 40 micro inches, uh, but it needs to be done with this abrasive at this pressure. There's process variables built into a specification. And then lastly, how do you actually control that in a manufacturing environment? Uh, what are the important variables, um, making sure you have quality abrasive, consistent velocity, and a uh, consistent quantity thereof. So that's it.